kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In Chemistry Lab, we don't want to have any emergencies, but emergencies happen without any warning or notice. So in this video, we'll go over with emergency procedures in Chemistry Lab, what we need to do and what we should not be doing. Number one, if there is any sort of emergency happens in the lab, the first thing we should do is tell your teacher. Your teacher is the best person to guide you what exactly to do, where to go. So in case of acid spill, we need to put baking soda, baking powder on the top of the spill till it neutralizes the acid. And it's easy to find out because you will not see any more bubbles from the reaction between acid and baking soda. Baking soda actually is a weak base. Now, in case if we got base pills, then we need to use opposite and acid. And the best mild acid is vinegar. So, same story. We add vinegar till there are no more bubbles seen. Broken glass. It happens sometimes there is broken glass in the lab, not with intention. So, we need to make sure that you use broom or dustpan to pick it up, not your hands. And you're going to put that not in trash, keep in mind, but into broken glass, which is a disposable box. Disposal container. So, again, keep in mind that you don't put that into a regular trash can. Next one, chemicals in your eyes. Not a good thing. The first thing we need to do is you need to go to eye wash station, which we have in our lab, and then you need to wash your eyes for at least 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that entire chemical is out of your eyes. Okay. Now, remember our safety rules in that we talked about safety goggles. So if you have safety goggles, this probably may not happen that much, right? Chemicals on you. If you get chemicals that can cause chemical burns on your body, skin, do not try to neutralize that with acid or base, baking soda or vinegar, because that actually will react and will produce heat and that can make it worse. So if it's a small drop, what do you do? You just rinse the area with water and that's good. If it's a large chemical, then what you need to do, you need to make sure you go near safety shower and take a bath until all the chemicals are washed out of your body. Next thing, fire. If the fire is very small, you can actually keep an inverted beaker or a container which won't easily get distorted by heat and it can stop fire because mainly it will stop the flow of oxygen. However, if someone's clothes are on fire, what do we do? We need to use a fire blanket in such cases. So what does it do? It actually stops the flow of oxygen and then of course flame gets extinguished. However, if there is a much bigger, larger fire, then what we need to do, we have to use in such cases fire extinguishers. Now, how do we use fire extinguisher? There are a couple of steps we should remember. It goes by pass. So the first P stands for pull. There's a silver pin which we have to remove that will break the seal. Next is aim. You have to make sure you have to aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Next one is second S. S is for squeeze. You have to make sure you squeeze the two handles together. And next thing after that is you have to make sure you are sweeping at the base of the flame. You have to make sure it covers the entire burning surface. All right, moving on. What if there is chemical fire? What do we do? 
we are not going to use even water because water may react with the substance and it can make it worse. Also, keep in mind there is an emergency shut off button in our labs and if any of such emergency occurs, just go and turn off the gas. That will be much easier to handle. Moving on, thermal or heat burns. The best thing to do immediately for such burns is flush the area with cold water and of course then send a student to a nurse. Now here are some random first aid tips. What if someone faints? For fainting, you don't need to overcrowd. The first thing you need to do is get that person some fresh air if possible. Also, you can have that person recline, make his head lower than the rest of the body and of course get some help from nurse. How about some major cuts, wounds? If there is a lot of bleeding, then the immediate thing you need to do is apply some pressure to the wound that will somehow at least stop the blood and then and then of course and, of, and then of course send the student to the nurse and if there is chemical poisoning and if and if for some reason there is chemical poisoning then the best thing to do is call the poison control or you can also call 911 remember again you have to use your common sense so remember all of our emergency safety tips so make sure you remember all of our emergency safety procedures i hope you guys have fun watching this video i'll see you again in my next video until then bye bye